Hello, this is Richard White, and uh, you Mugwumps people, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your game. Uh, in case you haven't figured out what's going on, here's the general idea with the game of Mugwumps. This is part of a printout here. You can see the game board here with uh, columns listed across here and rows listed up here. And uh, the general idea is you get 10 guesses to find out where the Mugwumps are hidden. In this particular case, the game board is this 10 by 10 uh, grid and the asterisks represent places that I've already guessed and gotten feedback on and <clears throat> M's represent the mugwumps that I've found and I get a little status support every time I guess uh, when I guessed 5 comma 9 here that's 5 columns over and 9 rows up just a moment ago uh, I, I was notified of the distance to mugwump number 1 which is someplace 4.24 away distance to Mugwump 2, and then I just found Mugwump number 3, that one right there, and I had already found Mugwump number 4, which apparently was located at 0, 5. So that's kind of what it looks like each time we get a status report. It prints out the board for us, and then we get to in, enter a new guess there. So when you're thinking about writing this game, there's a, a couple of things that are important for us to consider, and I suppose one of the first things that uh, we might want to talk about is the general game flow. So let's go ahead and set up a little Mugwump uh, pseudocode here. And I don't, I'm not worrying about actual Python here, although if it occurs to me while I'm writing it, uh, I can certainly put that in there. Maybe I'll put my Python 3 stuff in there. And I'm going to have, oh yeah, that's right, I'm going to have my uh, little mugwumps.py declaration up here. I can do all that stuff. But what I'm really interested in is the general idea of playing a Mugwumps game. And <clears throat> so let's see, what, what am I going to have to think about when I'm doing that? What am I going to have to keep track of? Um, I've got 10 guesses, so I'm going to uh, have to initialize my guess counter because I'm going to be keeping track of all that stuff. Um, I'm going to have to, uh, and I guess I'm going to have to be keeping track of all my Mugwumps that are in a list someplace. So um, I don't know, am I, am I going to have some Mugwumps? Mugwumps stored in a list. Maybe that list will come in. Maybe I'll create that list right here when I play the game. Um, I think I'm going to need to keep track of the Mugwumps that I've found. Maybe I'll put those in a list as well. And I'm thinking that I might even want to keep track of my misses, my Mugwump guesses that didn't work. I think I should keep those stored in a list as well. So you can see it's handy that we've just learned how to use lists. We're going to be keeping track of all these things. And then I guess um, once I've got all that set up, what am I going to do? Uh, it's going to be a while loop, right? While my number of guesses is less than 10 and <clears throat> while the number of mugwumps that I've found is less than three. Remember, I get to go from zero to four. So while um, number of mugwumps found, maybe I should do length, length of the mugwumps found list. As long as that's less than three, then I'm going to keep on doing all this stuff. I'm going to be looking for a mugwump. Look for mugwump. <clears throat> well, what does looking for a mugwump consist of? Um, it's not just getting their input. I actually want to print out the board for them. So print board. That'll be convenient. Uh, I'm going to invite them to enter their XY location. Input XY location of their guess. And then based on that, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to print out the four results from their guess. That is, I'm going to print out the distances between each of the four mugwumps and where they guessed. In some cases, if they've already found mugwumps, I won't print out the distance. I'll just say that they already found it. Um, after they've done that, I guess I'll increment the guess counter because now they've just taken another guess, so I need to make sure that I increment that. Uh, what do I call that? Number of guesses. 
And I think that's the end of my loop then. I think at that point then, once I've incremented that, they're going to go back up here. They'll get the chance, as long as we haven't reached our number of guesses and we haven't found all the mugwumps, they'll get the chance to look for another mugwump, print out the board, get their guess, print out the results of that guess, and add one to our guess counter. So this is the pseudocode that we can use to kind of think about how the game's going to work. And if the pseudocode gets good enough, one of the things I can do is just start filling in pieces here. Once, once I think I've got the pseudocode in, my, initialize my guess counter. I know how to do that. I, I was going to call that number of guesses. So number of guesses equals zero. That starts out at zero up there. The mugwumps are going to be stored in a list. Maybe uh, when I play the game, I'll actually send in the mugwumps in a list as a parameter there. So I'll already have those. Uh, maybe I'll put a little note here. Sent in as parameter. We'll talk about that in just a moment. <clears throat> I'm going to put all the mugwumps that I found in um, in a list, uh, but I don't know any of the mugwumps at the beginning here. So mugwumps found is going to be a list that starts out empty, and mugwump guesses also stored in a list. Mugwump misses. I'll put those in there as well. So I've got little bits of code in there just based on the pseudocode, and that's pretty good. I know how to look for mugwumps. Um, I'm going to actually, this whole thing here is going to be part of printing the board and doing all that. And put, I should probably have a function for that. I'm going to need to print the board a lot. And that's going to be a little bit complicated. So maybe I'll have a print board function that's going to take the mugwumps lists the mugwumps list, the mugwumps found list, and the mugwump misses lists. Maybe it'll take those as parameters and do something with those. I'm still working on that idea. Inputting the location, printing out the results, this is probably going to be complicated. Oh, but incrementing the number of guesses, that's pretty easy to do. Number of guesses plus equals one. So I would probably want to start running this at some point. It's not ready to run just yet, but I could start running it and making sure I don't have any syntax errors and all of this. So that's a good start. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's talk for a moment about the, um, let's talk for a moment about how you're going to store this data, the mugwumps, the board, the mugwumps found, all that information. That's going to be a little bit tricky for us. Um, so let's talk about that. I'm going to go into Python here so that we can play around with a few ideas and see what we can figure out. So first of all, um, the mugwumps that we have, it's probably a good idea to store those in a list. And if we called that mugwumps, that would probably make some sense. That could start out as an empty list here. Um, and when I look at what's in mugwumps, you can see it's an empty list there. I want to randomly store in the locations for a bunch of mugwumps. And I can do that simply by adding to that mugwumps list. The way I do that is I append an item to the list. <clears throat> and in this case, I'm going to append an XY location. So for the mugwump located at column 2 and row 4, I could add that in there. And maybe I'll have another mugwump randomly generated. I'm just making these up for now, but these will actually be randomly generated when the program works. 8, 4. Put that there. So when I start to look at my mugwumps list, you can see I've got a list of two items so far. And each item, this is mugwump 0, and this is mugwump 1. Each item is represented by a pair of xy coordinates. So if I want to get the x-coordinate of the first mugwump, that is mugwump 0. That would be identified by the 0 there. This is mugwump 0, his x and y coordinates. And if I just wanted to see the x-coordinate, that would be mugwump 0, the first item on the list, which is that 2 there. That item 0, the first item on the list, is going to represent the x-coordinate, so I know where that is, and the y-coordinate for that guy is going to be the first item, or I should say the second item on the list, index number one, and that's the four value there. So I've got coded in my mugwumps list here the xy coordinates of all the mugwumps. 
That's a data structure that I'm going to use to keep track of those mugwumps. You'll have four altogether. I've just put in two here to illustrate the point. You're also going to need to, uh, well, you might need to keep track of the board. And you can imagine what the board looked like, right? We saw a picture of the board there. The board is these little dots here with values there. And you might be thinking, well, how, I, how am I going to create that board? Now, let's see how we're going to represent the board. One way that you could do this, if you choose to represent the board, is to set up a list of lists. So we'll begin with the board being an empty list. And we're going to, let's say, have um, five columns. So I'll set the number of columns here equal to five. And I'm going to create those columns in the board by doing this. For column in range columns, so that's going to be range five. In other words, column is going to run from zero to four. Each time I go through that list, I'm going to append to the board an empty list. So now board consists of a list of empty lists. One, two, three, four, five. Numbered zero, one, two, three, four. One list for each of our columns. It's a very small little grid. If I want to make lists within that list, if I want to add values in there, what I need to do then is set up a number of rows. So maybe I'm going to set up a row, so I'll just set that to four. And watch how this works now. For column in range columns, just as before, for row in range rows, so this is going to be a, an inner loop, an inner nested loop, and I'm going to take whatever is at that point there, board sub column. So in other words, I'm going to get column 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. Each time, I'm going to take that column and I'm going to append to that column a value. Uh, I'm going to have a number of rows that represent spaces on my grid. So for now, let's just put zeros in there. Let's call, call it that. So when I take a look at board, take a look at what we see here. I've got my long list of items here. Each one of these is a column. And within the column, then, I've got my four rows. Here's the, first four, or here's the four rows in the first column, the four rows in the second column, the four rows in the third column, and so on. This is a really important point because this is a, an abstraction of a board. This is a data structure that represents a board. It doesn't really look like a board, but it is a board, or it can be printed as a board. And the way you would do that is you'd say, for column in co range columns, for row in range rows, and what do we want to do each time? We want to print whatever is at board column, row. And since I don't want to space down at the very end, I'll use that end value there. And then I'm going to want to do that for each row. But once I get to the end of a row, then I'm going to want to print to move down to the next line. So when I run this set of nested loops, take a look at what we have here. I've got my four columns set up there. Now it looks like I wanted five columns, so I may have messed this up a little bit. Oh yeah, I needed, I I needed to put my row in there. So I've, I've switched these around. This is what debugging is all about. I've switched those around. I need to move those back. And I'll get then five columns and four rows going up there. So you can see how this starts to look like a board. I didn't print out the periods that I was using. I printed out zeros, but those zeros represent locations on the board. And if you wanted to, you could store information in those zeros that represents the state of the board. That's probably the easiest way to do this here at the beginning. So I hope this uh, helps you out a little bit. I'll see you in class.